Right, my last video. So my last video was a drill on how to use the bounce when playing a pitch shot, shallowing the angle of attack and moving the path from in to out. There's a lot of comments being made on this video and it was maybe a little bit confusing. Some people were picking things up the other way, taking things out of context. So I'd like to try and clear it up. So let's discuss my last video. In my last video I mentioned that ball turf strike's not a good thing. Ball turf strike is a good thing. Not if you're trying to use the bounce of your wedge though. Because when you use the bounce of the wedge we want the back of the club to strike the ground just a fraction before we hit the golf ball. So we actually hit the ground first. Club then glides along the ground, the leading edge goes below the equator of the golf ball, ball runs up the face. That's what I meant by that. Of course a ball turf strike's good when we're hitting full shots into greens or a chip shot where you're using the leading edge of the club. So this golf ball sitting on the ground. As the club comes down, the back edge of the club strikes the ground first. The leading edge goes below the equator of the golf ball. The ball then runs up the face as the back edge continues to slide along the ground. Boom, ball's away, job done. So that back edge of the club, so the back edge of the club, not the leading edge, don't want that, we want the back edge of the club to strike the ground before the club strikes the golf ball. So we actually hit the ground before the ball. So that's what I meant there by ball then turf being a bad thing, especially when you're trying to create or trying to introduce the bounce of the club or use the bounce of the club with the shot. So that's going to add lots of loft. So bounce of the club hits the ground first, leading edge goes below the equator, ball runs up the face, this continues to skid along, we bruise the turf, we don't want the leading edge digging in, that would be a chip shot, you can see lofts off. In that instance we come down, we would have forward shafting, we would hit the ball first, ball would pop away, then we take a little divot afterwards, so leading edge would hit the, hit the ground after we've hit the golf ball. So that would be the ball turf, this time we're going turf ball because we're using the back edge, hitting the ground, under, continue along, away. There was also chat in the video or some comments saying that this would produce a shank because of the into out path. But it's not the hand path, it's the club head path. So we're really soft hands, I mentioned light grip pressure to feel that lag motion. Club goes away, the club head goes back on the outside, it drops a bit more behind the body and then the hands of course they go left through impact because that's a normal golf shot but that throws the club down to the golf ball. So if you can visualise the club head path and not force the hands to go in that path then we're on a winner. Let me show you this as well. So there's golf ball, I'm hitting towards the, the camera. I want the club head, not my hands, but the club head to trace the line of my shoulders which were open and then down along the line of my feet which was closed I'm then going to come back to impact and the club's going to come round so the club head's actually passing my hands through impact so I'm taking the club, this is my target I'm taking the club head out here it then turns round comes back along the line of my feet to the golf ball and then back round I did mention a figure of 8, if that was to continue it would make a figure of 8 so club head goes back this way so that's along the line of my shoulders it then comes down here along the line of my feet and then continues back round. So the club head then passes my hands. My hands don't go in that path, just the club head goes in that path. Shallow angle of attack. So as we know, this is awkward. <laughs> so as we know, there's the club head. There's the club that address. Okay. Club head's going to come round in this fashion, down and round, then back along here, hitting golf ball and round there. So at impact, club face is pointing towards target. There's club face. This is path of the club. Club face is there. Coming into impact, club face is here, here, here. Then it's coming through, starting to close, close, close. This mat is wet because of the rain's been in here. So that's the leading edge of the club. Leading edge of the club comes in here, like so. Like so, like so, like so. Club head now starts to pass the hands because we've got the bounce of the club, back of the club doing the thing. There, 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 and round. So you can see, this camera angle's not great, but you can see as we come down, 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 we're hitting down, hitting golf ball and round. In that fashion, encouraging the back of the club to strike the ground. 
So obviously this is drawn just to fit into the camera, but if I was to actually be hitting the shop with this, this would be a lot wider, wider way out here, coming round down back in here, and then of course it'll be going way wider out there. But I've really just drawn it like so with the yellow to try and fit it into the camera. Down the line, with feet closed, shoulders open, hop head traces that shoulder pie path or line of shoulders on the way back, right here, drops behind me, comes down along the line of feet, club head passes the hands, the club head passing the hands, what squares the face up at impact, and gets the ball up into there, and gets the back of the club to strike the ground. Like so. Everything's shallow from there. We talk about the shank, if people make their hands follow that path instead of the club head, club head's the only thing following that path, so the hands are nice and light grip, nice loose grip pressure, which is going to allow this to happen, a little bit wristy sort of shot, but if it's a hands are to follow that path, then as I come into impact, yes, I'm going to push the hosel towards the golf ball, and there's a chance we'll get that shank. But it's not the hands that are following this path. The line of the shoulders on the way back is what the club head travels along, there, and then on the way down, it's the line along the feet that the club head travels along, and then the club head passes hands, but in the back of the club, do the job. So I've placed this mat, top bottom mat, purely because I've drawn on this mat. So face on, feet are closed, here's my line. Shoulders are open, here's my line. Clip head goes back, just the clip head back, and the trace that line. Back, tracing. Back, tracing. Light grip pressure, clip head's nice and square at impact because the clip head's passing the hands. It's always squaring up, which is actually taking the heel out of the game. Yeah. 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 So guys, that's covered my last video. I'll obviously leave a link to my last video up on the side of the screen at the end of this video. Um, let me know if that clears things up a little bit. Obviously, the ball turf strike thing is very, very important. Hitting irons and, and chip shots and little shots into the green is very important. But we were talking about using the bounce of the club. This is a way to introduce how the bounce works on the golf club. We actually chunk it. Just a fraction, just a fraction. Now, I know all different levels of players. You don't want to go telling a high handicap or you must hit the ground before you play the chip shot because it's confusing. But just understanding... Oh, things are blown around here. Just understanding the bounce of the club and how that works will make you better at golf, will make your chipping better, it'll shallow angle of attack, it'll move the path a little bit into out, it'll get the ball up in the air. If you watch Mickelson, when Mickelson plays his pitch shot off the cart path, you know his little lob shot, he's got 64 degrees lob, but the bounce of the club's hitting the tarmac before he, the club, leading edge of the club hits the equator or below the equator of the golf ball. He does actually chunk that in a form. That's what I was trying to get across. Guys, if there's been any confusion, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> It happens, eh? <laughs> Please feel free to share these videos, both of them around. It'll be interesting to hear more comments from the first one, and then, of course, this is the backup one, so it'll be interesting to see. But please use the share option. Click the link below, take that link and put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, put it everywhere you can, share this around. That would really help me out. Thank you very much. Whoa!